Focusing on the next big topic on Pro Soccer Talk this week, let's switch gears and look at the Premier League and Ralph Rangnick at Manchester United. Look at his plan. Uh, he's brought in an American coach in Chris Armas. Obviously, that's uh, very interesting to the American audience and us in particular. We've seen him coach the New York Red Bulls and be a really good assistant coach in MLS and going back to his playing days in MLS with the US men's national team. So that's really intriguing. We'll focus on that. But firstly, for Man United, what is the style under Ralph Rangnick? Because it seems he is obviously the father of Gagan Pressing. He's already shown those high pressing tactics in that win against Crystal Palace in his first Premier League game in charge. So, Andy, what are your first impressions on, on what he's bringing to Manchester United? Yeah, it seems to be about what we would expect. And it's the most sensible thing for a half season when you're not going to be able to really remake the team until you get into next summer. And so they're going to try and be, I think, a little bit more proactive defensively. And I think that's that's an important thing because, uh, you know, for the talent that they have uh, in, in the attack, they have not done a good job of setting them up and putting them into positions where they can get into dangerous areas. And I mean, whether that's through balls in behind, whether that's crosses, whether that's simply playing outlet balls when they win it. The part of the field where Manchester United have won it, and I, and I looked at a little bit of the numbers right after Oli went because I wanted to kind of get a feel for what things looked like then versus what they're going to look like at the end of the season. And kind of the the uh, defensively, kind of the average positions that Manchester United's players would take up, the kind of the average areas where they would intercept the ball or win tackles, it was really deep, really, really deep. If you compare it to, say, a Liverpool, a Manchester City, Chelsea to less of an extent, um, the, it, they are really defensive team to start this season. And so I think bringing them out, out of their shell just a little bit, making them a little bit more difficult to play against, I think is the number one thing. But above all else, it's simply for Rangnick to get an idea of what pieces he has at his disposal, what is in the cupboard there at Manchester United, because once he finishes the six months as the manager, he's going to go upstairs into the consultant, technical director, whatever the position is going to be, and it's going to be his job to remake that. And so I think he's getting a very good idea up close and personal at what they actually have, what the issues are, what needs to be addressed at the club. And so when he goes into that position, he'll be I think very well educated on everything that's going on at the club. And so from that aspect, it's very smart. It's just a matter then of, are they going to listen to him when he tells them we need to do this, we need to do that, or will Manchester United kind of continue in the way that they have? That's really interesting because he already said in his first press conference, they asked, uh, you know, it's just a six month deal. Do you think you're going to stay any longer? And he said, we'll see how it goes. We'll talk to the club and then I'll tell them that they should probably keep me for another year. Maybe I'll do that. Or let's wait and see. So he's already trying to call the shots. He's already having a lot of pull and a lot of say in what's going on. And he said, yeah, I did that at Leipzig as well. I told him to hire me as coach for another year while we figured things out. So yeah, Ralph is at the wheel. He's got his feet under the firmly under the carpet. And uh, he is doing okay at Old Trafford early on. As you mentioned there, the, the high pressing, the high position of the team, that was really noticeable against Crystal Palace. How the the 4 2, 2, 2 system that he loved at Leipzig and has always loved as a coach. That got the likes of Bruno Fernandes and Jane Sancho on the ball centrally high. And on Fred's winning goal, incredible winning goal was right foot. Everyone was having a laugh and joke about that afterwards. But a great, great finish from Fred. But to me, when I, I paused that uh, on the highlights when I was watching it back, and if you actually look at that attack, when Greenwood had the ball and played it back, there were five Manchester United players, very, very central, very narrow against six or seven Crystal Palace players. And committing that many men forward allows United to have their best players on the front foot and just able to create chances. And yes, it does leave you a bit susceptible in the counter-attack, but they have enough good players that if you get them in the right positions and well-organized, which Rangnick is very, very good at doing, then they will be able to figure it out. And defensively, they're going to have to improve. They've got a few shutouts. Um, but they, they're going to have to improve. And I think that's the big, big way uh, that he can usher in this new era at Manchester United. And Nick, I mean, what else do you expect moving forward from him? Because he's obviously, um, you know, likes to blow his own trumpet a little bit. Let's say that he's not he's not scared to back himself. Um, and, and it seems like the kind of character that Man United really needed, right? He's come in and say, this is how we're going to do it. And everyone's going to follow me. Yeah, there's a more of a likable Sir Alex or likable Jose Mourinho <laughs> to his personality, right? There's some snideness already, and he hasn't even been under pressure. I, I like, I want to use a term that Andy used. He talked about the cupboard. 
I think what he's going to do is rearrange the cupboard and the ingredients are probably already in there to some extent. I don't think it's to an extent over a congested week of Champions League fixtures to, you know, to run Varane and Maguire out there time and time again. But, um, you know, I like that we saw, although there were some injuries involved, that we saw Tellez and um, and some other pieces in, in some interesting positions. He's going to use... Uh, Jadon Sancho, who's a fantastic player in the right way, he's going to find a way to use Donny van de Beek. I, f- I think with a lesser brand of manager, and again, I, I don't want to feel like I'm just dogging on Solskjaer here, but lesser brand of manager, find what works, and then stop looking for alternatives. We go back to that cupboard. The ingredients are going to be separated as to uh, in, in neat order of how he would like to use them, of what he needs when one of them goes down. And I just think we'll see more logic to how Manchester United attacks opponents, how they defend opponents, how they're organized, and, and how the changes are made. And if he can continue to keep that sort of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, we're Man United and we're good while, while they're at it, then the recipe is there for them to be a top four team this year or, because I don't think it's an and proposition, make a significant run in the Champions League. Absolutely. I, I, I don't think United you know, are going to be that exciting to watch, right? They're going to be organized, they're going to be well drilled, it's going to be a good machine, but it's not going to be the crazy games you've seen under Solskjaer, the wild comebacks. That's not Rangnick's idea of a good football team and, and how things should operate. And he's already starting to reorganize behind the scenes, isn't he? Because like we said, he's in for six months as the interim coach. Then after that, it's already been agreed he'll be in at United for two years in an advisory role, whatever they're going to call that, sport and director director, technical director, whatever kind of term they come up with. He may end up coaching the team for a bit longer. We'll wait and see on that. But there's already some new appointments as a sports psychologist that he's appointed. And then for us, really interesting to see Chris Armas come in as the assistant coach, which is a huge opportunity for an American coach who was fired by Toronto FC uh, earlier on this year. Obviously had a good run as New York Red Bulls assistant coach and then moved into the head coaching job. And although they won the supporter shield in 2018, uh, moved on from them pretty quickly. So Andy, what do we expect from Chris Armas? Because this is a really intriguing appointment and uh, this is a great opportunity for him, even if it's only short term to show what he's all about. And uh, he obviously knows Rangnick well from the, the Red Bull family of clubs. And that seems to be key in this appointment, doesn't it? Well, and that's where I would start is, We've said all these really positive things about what Ralph Randnick has done in his career and what we think he could possibly do at Manchester United. He's made the decision to bring in Chris Armas based on the relationship that he has with him. So I think anybody that, that's saying, well, Manchester United really scraping the barrel to find coaches these days. This guy was handpicked by Ralph Rangnick, who we, we are explaining why he is probably the right person for Manchester United at this time. And so you know, Chris Armas has done a lot to clearly impress Ralph Rangnick. He's a very good assistant coach. He's been on some good teams in MLS where he was assistant coach. And I think that there is, I know that there are just some people that are just better as a number two than they are as a number one. And I think in coaching, in all sports, that is maybe the number one most important area where it is good to understand, are you the head guy or are you the guy right behind the head guy? If you can be that bridge between the players in the locker room to the manager and you can make those connections, you can put out a lot of fires before they really get going. You can really build relationships. And that's clearly what Chris Armas has done with Ralph Rangnick. And so, if he's there as kind of that go between and, and to 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 bring a positive feeling back to Manchester United, when was the last time anybody associated with Manchester United felt happy, felt joy, felt like they were excited about the direction of the club? If Chris Armas can kind of be a little bit of that of that bridge there and help get that back on the field, that bleeds over very quickly to the fans and into the media and just into the public sphere, and, and it will help the results as well. So it's very, very interesting. It came out seemingly out of absolutely nowhere, but it just reminds you, it's all about relationships. It's about people that you know. It's about what they think of you. It's about what you've done for them and what they've seen you do before. And and, and clearly, Chris Armas, there is something about him that as an assistant, uh, you know, Ralph Rangnick said, I need that in my team. Hopefully we'll find out over the next few months. Maybe, maybe he'll talk about it a little bit in the, in the coming weeks. That'll be fun. That'll be really fun to listen to him talk about that, hopefully, um, and get a bit more insight into the appointment. But Nick, when we think about Armas and the teams he was involved with in the New York Red Bulls and under Jesse Marsh and how they played, it kind of makes sense that he is being brought into Manchester United. Right? Very well organized, very structured, as I said, 
a disciple of Rangnick and, and the the Red Bull way, if you will, uh, with all their teams across the world. So what, what kind of style will he help to usher in? I guess what we just talked about, right? The high pressing in the organization. Or will it will he bring something slightly different to Rangnick that will blend really well? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think when I think of the Red Bull apparatus, of which you cannot help but think of Rangnick and Armas and Jesse Marsh and all this, I think of component parts that are um, the sum is the, you know what I'm talking about, the old uh, sum whole thing. <laughs> I'm not going to say it right, so I'm jumping ahead. But I, I think about that, and if you can take Manchester United's talents and do that, where the, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, then you've got something special. Because I think that's what Sir Alex did so well. These were teams that had exceptional players and still outperformed itself unless they ran into a machine like the best Barcelona team of all time. And that's when it when it outran them. So that would be my hope when I, you know, I, I know I've mentioned top four a few times and now Conte's at Spurs. So it feels a little less automatic, but they're going to work. He's going to use them in the right order. And if Armas uh, is the guy behind the scenes. I, I've talked to so many college players over here in the United States, and they all want to give the assistant more credit than the head coach because the head coach is the one who pulls them out of the game. The assistant is always the most popular guy in town. It's why the backup quarterback, whenever the your football team loses, everyone says, well, maybe we need to put him in there. And you're like, no, your starter is Patrick Mahomes or whatever, right? Like the backup is always, and the second is always the most popular. And if that guy is likable, if that guy can engineer an attitude, um, it's only going to benefit them. So I think it's a really, really cool opportunity for Chris Armas and one that we don't see given to anyone, uh, let alone, you know, an American. Yeah, it's going to be fun from an American perspective to see how he does. And hopefully it just opens the door for more opportunities for American coaches in the Premier League and throughout Europe. Speaking of that, Chris Armas's old boss, Jesse Marsh, who they worked together closely at New York Red Bulls, he was fired uh, by RB Leipzig recently. Um, it didn't go well. He's obviously coached the New York Red Bulls. Uh, RB Salzburg went to Leipzig, made the journey all the way through uh, the Red Bull family. Do we think that's it's harsh, Nick? I know you watch the Bundesliga closely. Leipzig, obviously, they just beat Manchester City in the Champions League. They obviously are in the Europa League now. Not a great start to the Bundesliga season, but it wasn't really... A, horrendous they can still make it up and, and finish in the top four but it did seem from the comments from both jesse marsh and uh the club itself that maybe there just wasn't a good connection there and a good fit yeah. and it was just best for everyone to move on that's the only thing i can really get with i understand that they're lower on the table when they'd like to be but they've sold so much talent over the last few years and this summer they lost two incredible center backs um, Upa Meccano is showing us just how good he is at Bayern Munich. Ibrahima Kanate, I expect to see him play more for Liverpool, but those were big sells. And you can't just, at some point, we've talked about this before with Salzburg. And when, ironically, maybe when Marsh left Salzburg, the conversations that we had were, is he going to, uh, was he going to have the, the, the cupboard run out at Salzburg? Because you can't just keep hitting on every transfer. And I think that happened there. They lost three games in a row. They, they were all too tight contenders and they're still just I think five or six points outside of the top four if you're Leipzig I know you want to hit the heights but the goal should be to make it back into the top four and they're not out of that by any means and they can go win the Europa League um, once their backs are back and healthy he had a whale of a task ahead of him I'm sure when he took the job he thought there was going to be more patience with it and I think there should have been and it's not just because it was American I would say the same about Marco Rosa at Borussia Dortmund right now if you're worried because it hasn't happened that quickly. And I know this is the top level of soccer, Joe, but sometimes these big clubs still have to exhale and let it work itself out a little more. Yeah, definitely. Let's see how things work out for Jesse Marsh. Maybe he'll turn up at Manchester United and, and link up with Ralph Rangnick and Chris Armas again. That would be quite something, right? And have uh, Manchester United, RB Manchester United. Maybe that's in the future. I don't know. That's wild speculation, but it certainly seems like the main man behind Red Bull success is, is going to be driving Manchester United for the next few years. And the early signs are good for United. He's organized the team, seems to be getting a clear structure in place. Let's see where they can go from there because we know they have the finances to build a great team and buy great players. They just needed a structure. And finally, it looks like they're putting those building blocks in place to do that. And over at Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com, we'll keep you updated with all the latest news from Manchester United and around the Premier League. 
Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.